What's up, man? This Fat Trail, man, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Gang. I just followed all of my ops from a fake Instagram page. He about to pull up and catch him a bomb, but really he thinking he getting late. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We right back at it, y'all. We got DC's finest, the one and only Fat Trail jumping off the porch. Yeah, what it do? Yes, sir. What's up, bro? How you feeling? I'm cool, bro. How are you? Man, I'm feeling great, bro. Mm -hmm. Blessed, man. Shit, man. It's, it's a long time coming, bro. You Absolutely, know? it is. Yeah, man. DGB, we've been rocking with you, you know what I'm saying, since the beginning. You know I appreciate the love and support. Yeah, nah, for sure, man. So, you know, definitely glad to have you jumping off the porch with us. So, so man, let's, you know, let, let's get started with it. Well, first of all, man, like, what, what you got cracking here in Atlanta? Um, so, I came down here to um, shoot a couple of videos, uh, take care of touch up a couple things on the album with the mixing and mastering of the album with the engineers and the label and stuff like that. I had a couple meetings. So, you know, whenever I'm in Atlanta, it's always <clears throat> like a, a, a week or two of just getting work done. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Being away from home, having that peace to just get work done and just lock in. Yeah, no, that's what's up. And this ain't nothing new to you, man. I mean, yeah. you've been coming out to Atlanta for a minute. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, Atlanta, man, I used to live in Atlanta with Wale. So um, Atlanta, man, you know, it always been a staple in the music industry for me, you know, since I came in the game. So I always got to come down here and get work done, um, see the sta radio stations, blogs and all that. Like, it's, it's, it's very necessary, man. We in the A. Yeah. You know, uh, it's the A. For <laughs> sure, for sure. Yeah. You got any, like go-to spots that you just for sure got to make sure that you hit when you come here, whether it's for some food or the strip club or, you know what I mean? I got a couple of bitches cribs I got to for sure go to when I come to the A, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> other than that, we try to switch it up. Um, I ain't gonna lie, uh, I always got to stop in an exclusive game right. and see what he got. You know, he always got some cool custom shit, you know what I'm saying? And I like everything that he do with the black Leathers, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm a, I'm a. I always been a fan of exclusive game, but once I got to meet him and let him know my style, like he um, always keeps some shit in there. Always come through there, look supreme jackets, uh, exclusive North Faces and shit like that. But other than that, we try to switch it up, man. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't never let motherfuckers know where we gonna be at, so we switch it up every time. So no specific restaurants and shit right. like that. I can dig it, I can dig it. And man, um, exclusive game, like, I feel like bruh is still like underrated, you know what I'm saying? I, I've course. always said that he's like this age is Dapper Dan, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, the, the newer generation Dapper Dan. And um, it's weird because, you know, the world is a big place. Um, I would I would agree and say he underrated a little bit, but he, he worldwide nationally known yeah, but absolutely. it could be on a bigger scale, like yeah. how, how Gucci did that Dapper Dan. Like, I feel like they need to get with him because his, 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 his knowledge into fashion is very well needed in yeah. this generation, in this world. Like a lot of people, a lot of your great outfits that you see on these red carpet events and All-Star Weekends and Super Bowl parties and even concerts, video shoots, a lot of your artists that you see dressed in this exclusive Custom shit, it really came from exclusive game. Word, word. Yeah. Most known unknown, like yeah. 36 Mafia. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. So, man, who you got uh, up here on the porch with you, bro? Who you bringing? I got my Brody Jizzle, man. You know what I'm saying? It's been a long ass time since me and him was on the street together. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I did four years and he did five. But, like, the way we went in, I, I believe it's been like six or seven years since we've been on the street together. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It's always good to have one of your close friends back. Nah, and, absolutely. Um, you know, we just try to stay out the way as, as, as much as possible, get work done, and, and, and have fun on our, on our off time. So, you know, whenever we can get out of the city, we get out the city. Nah, for sure. And yeah. I mean, who better to roll with than somebody that can relate to, you know, what you done went through, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then both of y'all having like some of those same common goals, you know what Absolutely, I'm saying? Absolutely, yeah. On, on the tip of staying out the way, you know what I'm saying, more success, things like that. So, Absolutely. Nah, for sure. and, and you know, staying out the way is one of the highest goals on the list because it's so hard to, Yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, uh, dealing with the paranoia from the police and affairs and indictments and prosecutors is weird, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it was all fun and games when we was, what, 15 through 21, damn near. But, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, once you really get them people on you and they know you and they work at a job to get you off the street, like, right. they come into work every day, getting on their desk, doing research and work, trying to get you off the street. Once you 
know that that's what people is really up to, it changed your whole perspective of life. Yeah. You no, know so. nah, for sure. And I've been seeing like you I've been seeing like in different interviews and you've been tweeting like about like your new, you know what I'm saying, perspective on life and yeah, all that. Absolutely. Um, I saw a quote where you were saying like I want them to appreciate the hard work that I put in to getting this mindset because I put a lot of time and hours into this. Yeah, absolutely. Work. Can I'm, you talk about that new mindset? Um, what I mean by that is not taking life for granted, number one. Um, appreciating your family and your kids more. You know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> I, um, I felt as though that I wasn't doing a good job as a father before I went to prison, you know what I'm saying? Took care of them financially, sent money, made sure they had everything, clothes, shoes, groceries, whatever, and all the fun stuff they needed. Okay, cool, I did that. But I was never there, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was never there. And then I'm dealing with a situation where, you know, I got these people trying to take me off the streets for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And even the four years that I did was like, wow, it was mind opening because they really trying to give you 40 years, 60 years. So I'm doing that for like, imagine if I had to do this for 40 years. Right. And it was just an eye opening situation for me where I was just like, you know what? I just can't move like that no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, when I say I hope they appreciate the hard work that it take to get the mindset, what I mean by that is it's hard not breaking the law. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's hard not walking up to a nigga and shooting him in his motherfucking face, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody on earth, I feel like they want to walk up to a motherfucker and shoot him in their face every day. Yeah. Whether it's in traffic, your boss, uh, your baby mother, your baby father, this person, whoever, you know what I'm saying? Somebody disrespected you, whatever, you know? Like, everybody had that feeling. Yeah. So, it's hard not to make that decision, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's really, like, hard to stay out of prison. So. I think when I spend time with my kids or when I'm chilling or staying out the way, that's, that's real hard to do because the, the trenches is addictive. You know what I'm saying? The, the fast life, the going outside and having different bras pull up on your strip, popping bottles, cooking out, shooting dice, you know what I'm saying? Selling drugs. Yeah. That shit is addictive. You feel me? Like yeah. that's how a nigga grew up all day, every day, 24 seven. So it's hard work to ignore that or to fight that urge to go do those things. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can dig it's hard work not to kill niggas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know no, I mean? it's like a full-time job not to kill niggas. Come on know? now, <laughs> real spill. Man, so talk to us about DC, bro. Like for our audience, you know what I'm saying? Like, can you tell us like, you know, where exactly you from in DC? No? Yeah, um, I'm from the Northeast section of uh, DC. So it's four sections, Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, and Southwest. I'm from Northeast. Um, I'm from the Pentagon. That's on um, 15, between 15th Street and 16th Street. So that's 1500 Benning Road. Okay. That's my area where I'm from, East View Bangers, AZ Base, um, going up and down the street and just thugging. And, um, yeah. you know, like if you're a person who's not into states, different states in America, some people don't even look into what's really going on in DC. Mm -hmm. So you had some people who just say, okay, I might never go to Washington, D.C. I know the president lives there, and that's where they make all the laws at. Capitol, White House, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King did his I Have a Dream speech there. That's the basic things that people know about D.C. But if you like a person who like to travel, or if you a person who had family or anywhere, or if you a person who like go fuck with bras in different cities, and you really come to D.C., people see that it's nothing like what corporate America portrayed to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At all. Yeah. yeah. Now I remember being in elementary school and like they they did like this trip to go to DC. Mm -hmm. I couldn't afford to go, so I ain't go. Wow. But I remember my partners came back. I'm from Milwaukee. Wow. And like my partners came back and they was like, man, they like us in DC. Yeah. Like man, they talk just like us. Uh -huh. Like they they just like us. And I was like, damn, word, cause you know, cause you just think that DC, the president, all yeah. that, you know what I mean? So you right. just think it's a certain way, not knowing that I mean it's one of the dopest like cities for black culture Absolutely. like in the world. You Absolutely. Know what I mean? yep. for real. It is, man. We um they they you know we used to be formerly known as Chocolate City yeah. for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like where to the point where <clears throat> the District of Columbia was majority black. You know what I'm saying? So um we always been known as the Chocolate City. Definitely a dope place to grow up and live. Yeah. Um but you know, every city got 
it's upsize and it's downsize. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. Wow. Yeah. So when did you jump off the porch? I would say I jumped off the porch. Like, what's my real definition of jumping off the porch? Like, I would say around nine to ten okay. when I started like jumping off the porch and like stealing shit for profit or you know going to different hoods robbing dice games and just doing little petty wow. shit yeah. you know what I'm saying trying to earn a dollar uh, I was probably about like I want to say 10 or maybe 9 yeah. cause I don't remember the year like 99, 2000 or something like that but that's when I first jumped off the porch just trying to earn some money yeah yeah Word. And uh, in, them, in them times, like, do you remember, like, some of the stuff you was doing, like, some of the, you know, early things that you was doing, like, to survive and to, you know what I mean, while you were um, trying to figure it out? <clears throat> Man, you know, we did, we did a lot of shit, bro. Yeah. Like, we did a lot of shit. Like, you know, it's a, a lot of things I ain't going to say, but... um. You know, we did what we had to do to survive, man, whatever yeah. that meant, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I was living in an area where coke was being heavily sold, PCP was being heavily sold, marijuana was being sold on like a small little in-neighborhood scale, but the coke and the PCP was, motherfuckers was driving from all different areas, Maryland, Virginia, different yeah. parts of D.C. to come and get that coke and come and get that PCP. So, um, just dipped and dabbed in that and just try to... Uh, make some money and keep it at my man house. I was too scared to keep it at my mother house because yeah. I had two brothers, so it was three of us and my mother. So I had to worry about one of them finding it, trying to take it, or my mother finding it, whooping my ass. So I couldn't keep my money at my house. I was keeping it at my homie house right. down the street. and um, Just scratching to survive, man. Every day we used to, every other day we might go to liquidators, a store called Wholesale Liquidators, and we would go steal us a pair of boxes, the tank top, yeah. toothbrush, you know what I'm saying? It got to the point where we stole so much, the lady was like, look, I just <laughs> set y'all some shit to the side. Y'all don't have to steal no more. Yeah. Just come and get it, like, come get it, like, once a week, you know what I'm saying? So right. it was hard coming up, man. Yeah. Like, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't nothing in our surrounding area. Like, that's why I say people, you got different people who, who view D.C. different ways. But for me, in my area, it wasn't a lot. Word. And so, um, when did you, like, find your love for music? When did you know that you wanted to get into it? Um, I always had a love for music, you know what I'm saying? I always uh, knew I was going, I felt like I was going to be involved with music, like, mm -hmm. as an adult. Um, but when I was young, I was just ripping, running the streets. But uh, before, before I dropped out of school, I started playing with this band called Hardcore Band. And um, so that was like my first little dose of that. You feel me? Just fucking around with the band, Go-Go Band shit. Because you know Go-Go Run DC. Yeah. So fucking with the Go-Go Band, rapping, doing shows and stuff like that. That's where I got over my fear of performing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. But I always like been involved with music. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I just, I always made, I ain't make time for a lot of shit. Whether it was only for getting money or girls. And if it wasn't for getting money or girls, I made time for music, like, whenever I could. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, do you remember, like, your first time, like, getting in the booth and, and, and recording a song? <sighs> my first time getting in the booth and recording a song, my mother's, um, my mother's old boyfriend, she used to mess with this dude named Lamont. And Lamont knew a nigga uptown who had a studio. I forget how old I was. I probably was about... 11 or 12 or something like that. Yeah. And um, he paid for me like an hour or two hours. I know I wasn't there longer than two hours. Mm -hmm. And um, I recorded some shit, like, and that was the first time I heard my voice over a record, you know what I'm saying, like studio-wise. So that's, yeah. when I, that's when I really fell in love with it. Like, I fell in love with how I sounded as a rapper. The first time I heard myself, Word. I was like, wow. Word. Yeah. Now, see, that's funny because most of the time you hear people say like the first time they record it, they hear themselves and they hated it. Yeah. Or they, you know what I mean? Right. But like when but when you heard it, like you you knew like that that you the sound that you first heard was like what you like wanted to do and all that. Absolutely, like, yeah. Like what I heard was I heard like I heard a young nigga from DC telling a story. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like 
a story that, you know, we listen to rappers and all that, but like when I was coming up, wasn't no rappers from DC. Right. You feel me? Like, wasn't none. We had Strictly Go Go, that's it. You yeah. feel me? So when I, was, when I was listening to my shit play back, I'm like, wow, like, I feel like the world need to hear this. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So when I heard it, I fell in love instantly. Word. And who was influencing or what rappers influenced you? Like when you was coming up, who was you bumping? When, you was coming um, up? when I was coming up, I bumped a lot of Scarface, okay. uh, Wayne, Gucci, and Ross. Okay. Word. You know what I'm saying? Like Scarface, Gucci, Wayne, Ross, bro. Yeah. Like them was the main four that I was listening to. I ain't really need to hear nothing from nobody else. Like, right. yeah. because they music, the lifestyle that they was rapping about and the, the lyrics that they was rapping about, that was my everyday life in some way, form or fashion. Mm -hmm. Or if it wasn't, if it wasn't something I was specifically doing, my nigga was doing it or my bitch was doing it. You know what I'm saying? So those, those, those four artists like control my, you for going right. out. Not for sure. And I, I could definitely, like, I, I would have said Scarface, you yeah. know what I'm saying, if somebody would have asked me to answer for you. You know what I mean? Cause Absolutely. Just, yeah, because just like, I, just from your music, like with the storytelling mm -hmm. and then um, the fact that like, you've always been willing to like get vulnerable in your music and, and talk about, you know, even like the downfalls that might happen from certain situations, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. So, I, you know, I kind of feel like, you know, you were one of those pioneering artists when it come to even you know like this pain music genre that they got now that you know what i mean a certain few artists have kind of slid into absolutely you know what i mean but like but just always being willing to like just you know what i'm saying get emotional on the track but like in a way that like real cats can you know what I'm saying, relate, relate to, to. Yeah. absolutely i feel like um you know i always respected the artists who gave you all of them you know what i'm saying it's cool to rap about the come up. It's cool to rap about the lick I just hit. It's cool to rap about this amount of money on mm -hmm. fucking bitches in this state, that state, that's cool. But how you get there? What was it like before? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I always um, speak on, um, she wanna fuck me, I'm fat and I'm ugly. I can remember when bitches wouldn't touch me. I always speak on that. Yeah. I always let it be known, just so we clear, when you listen to my music, fans, females in the future, whatever, I remember when I couldn't fuck bitches like you. Huh. So let's get that understood, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know what's going on, you know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> I always been willing to speak that truth, um, being broke, being poor, homeless. I slept outside, I slept in laundromats. Mm -hmm. Real Washingtonians know this about me, you know what I'm saying? So. I, I didn't feel like it was something that I should hide through my music either because I know it was uh, millions of Americans that could relate. Yeah, yeah. Now something else that um, when, I, when I first, you know, got onto your music early on, something else that really like made me want to listen was the fact that like you had like a diverse group of producers and artists that you was rocking with. Absolutely. So like, I mean, I, I remember seeing like J. Cole was, yeah. you know what I'm saying, producing stuff early on and Harry Fraud yeah. and like, I mean, you had production from Big Crit, Big and, Crit. you know what I'm saying, yeah. all that. Like, and I remember that, so that was what like made me want to tap in and see what it was about. Mm -hmm. um, what like, where did your diversity in music even come from? You know what I'm saying? Um, I felt like, well, you know, I grew up and my mom listened to a lot of Anita Baker, Al Green, Marvin Gaye, Gerald LeVert, stuff like that. So I always not been afraid to just listen to just trap music, you know what I'm saying? Like street music. I wasn't afraid to throw some Anita Baker on whole album, you know what I'm saying? Like I was raised like that. I still ride around like that to this day. Um, you know, working with J. Cole and Crit and Harry Fraud and all them, those situations came more out of, I was blessed and extremely humble to rap on their beats. You know what I'm saying? I felt like, oh shit, I'm about to rap on a J. Cole beat. You know what I'm saying? And this was back when Cole wasn't even telling people he was a producer right, like that. Right, and he had right. a lot of beats and he was just like, man, I don't know what to do with him. Like, man, while they was listening, like, what? I was like, can I have that beat? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fuck you, man, you don't know what to do with it. Let me get that beat, you know what I'm saying? Um, but as far as my diversity, man, you know, just always traveling, you know what I'm saying? I spent a lot of time in Chicago. I used to live in New York. I used to live in the A and I used to live in Miami. You know what I'm saying? So I always been 
around different cultures, different ways of life, different slang, different lingo, mm -hmm. um, different laws. Yeah. If you know what I'm saying? Like different foods. All everything right. I always been moving around, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's where a lot of my diversity come from. Word, word. Yeah, and you mentioned Chicago and I mean you and you and Chief Keith, you know, got I feel like some of the most classic songs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, hell yeah. Uh, of, of like uh, uh, this era, right? Know what I'm <laughs> yeah, like, for real. For People real. always tell me that, man. I like, mean, for real, man. Yeah. Like that, fuck the feds, like that, that Russian roulette, like man, them joints is retarded. You know, what I'm I appreciate it. Yeah, but um, and then and then Young Chop, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like you you didn't collab with him so a, a many lot. times, man. Yeah. So I know you had mentioned Chicago, and that was you know something that I was gonna tap into was just you know your connection you know, with the shy and all that. Right. Yeah. So my connection with the shy came like, you know, it was weird. Like, I guess me and Sosa had done a lot of music early on, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And a lot of my fans thought I was from Chicago. You feel me? A lot of DC niggas thought, niggas and bitches thought that Sosa was from DC. You know what I'm saying? But um, I went out there real early on, and this was back when like rappers wasn't willing to travel to Chicago. Mm. You feel me? Um, I went out there. I think my first time in Chicago, Dirk was locked up. Okay. Cause we was riding. I remember us riding around with free little Dirk shirts on. Me, Boss Top, Jay Mana. You know what I'm saying? And we went to um, the store. I think it was called Exclusives or something like that. We went to the store. They took me to Harold's, get something to eat, all the traditional Chicago shit. And then we just went back to Old Block. We was walking around Old Block. You feel me? I got hot. I took my shirt off. Yeah. And that, they looked at that like, bro, you walking around Chicago with no shirt on, bro? Like, <laughs> in the summer, niggas don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, they was just looking at me different. And I spent a lot of time there, man. I had a lot of bras there. So I was going to go pull up and stay with all my little bras and shit. And niggas was like, they just couldn't believe it, you feel me? They was just like, damn, like you comfortable with this shit. Not only will you fly to Chicago, come hang up block, but then like at the end of the night after the clubs and we getting lit on the block and all that, yeah, I'm gonna go stay with my bitch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah we straight. Well, I'm straight. You know what I'm <laughs> right. saying? Like I ain't tripping about nothing. You, yeah. you feel me? Like I'm, I'm that's where I'm headed at. And they just respected that a lot, man. And I spent a lot of time out in Chicago, bro. That's my number one favorite city in America to visit. Okay. I, I love Chicago. Word, word. And man, you came up, you know, in the you, you know, in the blog era, which was, you know, like a, you know, a classic era in hip hop and now a lot of people are talking about you know, that uh, that era. And so, you know, during that time, I mean, I remember, I think like I first saw you perform like um, at the smoke, at like one of them Smokers Club, you know, tour, shows. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. That yeah. was my first tour, Smokers oh, Club tour. Word, yep. So I think I saw you like one of those shows, I think to stop in New York or Brooklyn, something like that. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, but like, I mean, it was just so many art, like we mentioned Crit, and then, you know what I mean, just so many like dope artists and, right. and, and you know what I mean, amongst that time, man. Can you just talk about like that era, you know what I'm saying? Of um, That was the mixtape era, man. That yeah. was the live, live mixtape, Debt Piff era, um, before the deals. Freedom to release music when we want to do what the fuck we want to do. And that's what we was really doing, man, just giving the streets music, man, and just turning up with them. You know what I'm saying? And um, it, was it was definitely different, man. It wasn't, social media wasn't that heavy, heavy, heavy as much as it is now. So I'm glad I got to experience um, that, that little wave before social media hit hard. I'm glad that I got to experience to know what it felt like before that shit, you feel me? So yeah. it was just, um, it was different, man. Like I definitely appreciate the past and, 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 and loved my future. Yeah, no, nah, that's mm -hmm. what's up. That's what's up. And uh, you had actually came, uh, live, us, DGB, and Live Mixtapes did a South by Southwest show, okay. and you had came and rocked it out, you know what I'm saying? Show Austin. love. So, yeah, yeah, in Austin. I always loved Austin, man. Well, Texas, period. But, yeah. you know, Austin was just like that college town. I never been there outside of South by Southwest, so I don't even know what Austin is like outside of South by Southwest. Yeah. So, every time we went there, it was always once a year. It was always special, man. You know what I'm saying? Like doing, doing those festivals and, and South by Southwest is one of the top tier special festivals. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, when I get out there, we got to go crazy. We got to represent. 
Got to yeah. represent DC. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. No, nah, for sure. Now, um, we now we started out, you know, talking about, you know, like your legal issues that you was mm -hmm. dealing with. And it seemed like since like 2016, you had kind of you, you did like a couple of couple Bitch, of stamps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I did like three. Word. All the way from 2016 to 2022. Word. I Word. did like three. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. It was definitely a rough time, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, you know, that's well after I got my deal, mm -hmm. and I was just running around DC, just like I wasn't who I was, bro. Yeah. You feel me? Just tripping, man. Just living at the same time, not overdoing nothing, like not doing shit that I absolutely didn't have to do, mm -hmm. but just doing shit that I used to do before rap, and it just didn't make no sense, really. Yeah, you know yeah. I know we get to a point where we kind of think like. I, I, could, I could do this because I'm, I'm just going over here and it's right. going, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. it's going to be quick. But then that one turn, you know what I'm saying, could change everything. Absolutely. But, I agree. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, you spent you spent some time in during the pandemic. Absolutely. What was that? What was that experience like? <clears throat> um, so. They locked the jail down for like at least two weeks when the pandemic first hit. Um, I remember like, call me crazy, but I remember like, George, I remember the George Floyd shit happened. And then I remember like, the pandemic hitting heavy. That's one of the two things I remember on one of my bits. But um, they locked the jail down for like two weeks and then it just, everything turned into 23 and one. It was just no general population, nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, it was rough. We, 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 we laid down for a long time and read a rack of books and you feel me? That's it. You, you, unless you was in a facility where you had TVs in your cell, shit like that. But where I was at at the time, I was at DC jail. We ain't had nothing but books. Wow. You feel me? That was long before tablets came to regular jail facilities and all that. It was rough, man. When COVID hit, it, it really tested your manhood or, or, or your mental, your manhood and your mental because now we locked down regardless. It ain't no playing basketball and talking on the phone for hours and cooking and gambling, playing cards. It was just straight 23 and one for like two years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, do you remember um, like the day that they, like like the day that it was, the day that you were told that you was gonna be getting out or that you could leave, like do you remember just like your thought process when you knew that you was about to be getting out of that place? Yeah, it was the day I got sentenced. So I was um I was fighting a gun charge, fell in the possession of a firearm, 922G1, I believe. Um and I had been fighting it during COVID. So they kept pushing my court dates back. Ridiculous, ridiculous. By the time I get to take my plea, I was at like 28 months fighting the gun. You know what I'm saying? So when I get my plea, she, um, nah, I go to court and I take my plea. When you, when you take your plea, she give you a sentencing date. Mm -hmm. So she was like, I'm gonna sentence you on such and such, September to such and such, whatever the date was, you know what I'm saying? And um, when I get the sentencing, so two months later, I get the sentencing. Now at this point, I'm about, what, 35 months in, you know what I'm saying? So. When she sentenced me, she sentenced me to 30 months. I overdid my time. Mm -hmm. So that day w w where she sentenced me, that's when it dawned on me like, I'm about to get out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm about to get out. Like, it's, it's hard to even put how I felt in words, how I felt when I knew that I was about to get out. You feel me? So that day is just, it's indescribable. Yeah. No, I can dig it. Yeah. I can dig it, man. I know ain't nothing like it. You know what I'm saying? It is. I can't explain the feeling, bro, to yeah. know that you about to get out from from captivity. You right. held in captivity, bro. Right. You feel me? You house somewhere where you don't want to be. Yeah. You feel me? Like it's a my Chicago niggas called it kidnapping. They don't say I got locked up. They say man, so I just got kidnapped. Huh. It's a real kidnapping. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a kidnapping for living everyday life. You feel me? So. That was a kidnapping, and, and, and when they give you, it's, it's easy to get in trouble. It's very, very hard to get out, man. Huh. It, it's a lot of loopholes that you got to go through before you can be released. It's not easy to be released. Huh. So when you, when you find out that you're about to be released, 
It's breathtaking. Yeah. Indescribable. Yeah. Word, man. I can dig it, man. Happy to have you home, bro. Absolutely. I appreciate it. You know it. what I'm saying? Seeing you being productive mm -hmm. and dropping music and new visuals and all that. Absolutely. And, and getting back in your mode, bro. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do, um, do you ever feel like you, you know, like lost some years or lost a part of your career? You know what I'm saying? With Absolutely. You know I'm saying? Absolutely. You know, when you do, when you do, absolutely, when you do prison time, yeah, you do. You feel me? You lose out on the ear of the fans mm. for four years. You feel me? Yeah. I was dropping music here and there, yeah, but I wasn't out to promote it, shoot videos, do shows, concerts, festivals, none of that. Mm. You feel me? So, yeah, I, I took a huge loss by going to prison. Yeah. But luckily for me, like my work ethic and my energy and my 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 aura period it just it, it kept me alive you know what i'm saying like i was very hands-on with my fans i wasn't disrespecting my fans i took all the pictures that they asked for i did all the drops for the djs i did everything you know what i'm saying so fans really missing me yeah. i'm a real nigga you feel me and i say what they want to hear i say what artists want to say but are afraid to say you know yeah. what i'm saying i've always been that way so I, I knew they was going to miss me, you know right. what I'm saying? So, but yeah, I definitely took L by going to prison, no doubt. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say is one of the biggest life lessons that you've learned, um, you know, through everything you've been through? That life is short. You can't take life for granted, man. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of young dudes, man, from 16 on up to 35 who they made decisions and their life is over with. Mm. You feel me? Like, you supposed to live till you 80, 90 years old, have grandkids, grandkids great grandkids, at the family reunion, doing your bop, <laughs> you feel me, with your grandkids, your great grandkids. You supposed to still be doing that. Yeah. And this niggas is 16 and 17 year olds on up to niggas, I know that's 32, 35, 25, 26, and they fighting like, doubles and triples and shit, you know what I'm saying? Or already done lost to one and about to come back over to jail and fight two more and shit like that. Like, yeah. And I mean like those quick decisions, you you made, a, in a 30 second decision, you made a lifetime decision yeah. at the same time. Because what you chose to do in 30 seconds is gonna lead you to do this for the next 40 to 50 years of your life. Yeah. And that's sad, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that's fucked up. Yeah. Man. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Man, how does it feel, you know, coming home and receiving so much love from your fans and peers and, you know, all that? It's a beautiful feeling, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers don't fuck with nobody. Motherfuckers don't love people. Yeah. You know, it's starting to show more and more now. So, I'm to be embraced by the hip-hop community, my fans, family, friends. It's a beautiful feeling to know that somebody love you and know that somebody fucked with you and that somebody missed you. But most of all, my kids, man, you know, they miss me and it shows, yeah. you feel me? So um, that was, that was, that was a, 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 the welcome back was very well accepted, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, that's what's up, that's what's up. And so you got the, the new project, Nightmare on E Street 2. Two. You yeah. got a release date on that? Um, nah, not yet, man. We look at, we, man, we dropping June, though. Word. It's dropping in June, bro. Man, man. we need that, I'm man. Speaking into, I'm speaking, yeah, I'm speaking into existence, man. Yeah, and yeah, part, gotta, part one was so legendary, bro, that, you know, say so you got to come with it on the second one. Absolutely, <laughs> I got you. I appreciate it, man. A lot of people don't know, like, um, Nightmare on Eastry 1, that was like my first time, I believe, recording in Cali. Mm. So a lot of that shit I recorded in Cali, just out of the city, just going crazy right. on different beats and shit, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Nightmare on East Street, like, that's definitely a classic in my book, too. Word, word. Yeah. So what can we expect from part two? Um, I got some features on there, man. And um, what you can expect from Nightmare on East Street, too, is like a, 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 a upper echelon of Fat Trail, you know what I'm saying? Like, a, sort of like I graduated, you feel me? Like, I'm just more mature and and um, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding my position in life, my role in my family's life. 
I'm understanding and appreciating it more. And I think it's coming out through the music. Like, we, you know, we're just speaking on a lot of hood knowledge that I learned and, and, and trying to get a game back to the, those who coming up under me. Like, you're going to hear that a lot of my music, like just being smart. But, you, you, you know, we still going hard. You know what I'm saying? I am from North East. I can't shake that. So I speak to the trenches. I live for the trenches. So, you know, you know I'm talking to the trenches on there. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. I, I love the project, man. I can't wait for it out of here. Word, nah, that's what's up, man. Uh, you dropped, I know you, you dropped two videos to it, uh, Fenster. Yeah, uh, with Art. That. Yeah, and I dropped Fenster and Art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What um, was it like working with Big Boogie? Boogie, man, that's my nigga, man. I was just in Memphis with Boogie, man. Word. That's my dog, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, he a dope-ass artist, bro. You feel me? And, like, Memphis always had classic artists. You know what I'm saying? So, like... The work with bruh, like, catching his vibe in the studio, like, we vibing, you know what I'm saying? I'm going yeah. off his energy, going off my energy, is like, it's a vibe. Young nigga, real nigga, man, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Solid team around him, solid family. So, it's always an honor amongst men, when real men, that's on man time, link up and just make some music, do it for the culture, do it for the bitches, man. He love the bitches, I love the bitches. So you know we gotta do it for the bitches. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes sir, yes sir. Mm -hmm. And then you got the newest single, Art. Um, that music video is out. Can you talk to us about yeah. that joint? Um, yeah, we uh, Art is out on all platforms. The video out on YouTube. Directed by my cameraman, Mari, man. Be different, Mari, you know, be different films. You know what I'm saying? It's just one of those ones where I'm just, Talking that talk, you know what I'm saying? Like taking it back to that trapped out Gucci, old Gucci shit, just in the chat, we thugging, drinking and drugging, fucking bitches, just doing us, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm back, so I'm basically just letting the city know, like, you know, King back, man. King of the North is back, man. You feel me? And I'm just talking that talk. Like, I gotta talk that talk. Like, I gotta represent my trenches. I gotta represent my city, period. Word, word. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else you working on? What else you got coming up, bro? Man, we was just. <sighs> I was just in a meeting for hours yesterday with um, one of the guys from the label. I don't even know what I'm, a, at, I, don't, I don't really be knowing what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not allowed to say on camera, you know what I'm saying? But like Nightmare on East Street dropping soon, like I'm trying to drop it in June and I got three more projects ready to go right after that. Like my, if I can legally drop four projects this year, yeah. that's what I want to do. I want to I wanna drop four projects this year. Okay. You feel right. me? So. Yeah. I know I don't, I don't really be allowed to say the names and, and certain dates on certain shit and stuff like that. So Nightmare on East Street 2 ready. And I got three more ready after that. You feel me? Like yeah. that's that's just where I'm at musically right now. And I'm doing everything in my power to get that out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like man, I done laid down long enough. I'm home. I'm trying to drop, man. I'm yeah. trying to crush the streets and I just I just want to talk my talk, man. I've been gone for a long time. I got a lot to say. No, nah, for sure. Yeah. And I and I think with your fan base, I mean, you could have one of those types of runs. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like where you could, you know, like one of those currency or like Larry June kind of runs where like cats is dropping, like mm -hmm. you said, three, four projects in a year. Absolutely. And it's all quality music, so the fans is you know tapped in. Of course, it. yes, yeah. always. You know what I'm saying? Like we always working, man. Like and. Um, I'm thankful for to be able to have the fans that I got, man, loyal fans, man, yeah. that fuck with me. They watch me grow up, basically. I already know what it is. Like, my fans, like, they watch me grow up. You feel me? Yeah. Like, I be having fans DM me and tell me shit about myself that I forgot. I like, damn, I forgot about that. Yeah, I remember that, man. I just want to tell you, stay strong, keep your head up, yeah. make good decisions, be smart. We love you. We miss that. Like, you feel me? So, so to be able to still come home and, and have a fan base that I can um, cater to, is a blessing in itself too, you know what I'm saying? So I gotta, I gotta feed them, I gotta talk my talk. And I feel like I gotta represent like where I come from, yeah. first and foremost, always. That's always number one on my agenda, I gotta represent DC. Yeah, no, for sure, bro. I mean, I feel like Trail, like you could, you could have one of them runs, bro. And Absolutely. as somebody who, you know what I'm saying, has always respected your music and fucked with, you know what I'm saying, like mm -hmm. your movement. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think it'll be dope and, and fans gonna wanna, you know, see that and gonna wanna, you know, hear what you got coming, bro. Absolutely, yeah. and you know I'm gonna give it to them. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Now, we was talking about staying out the way earlier um, I heard that like you like get down on like the Call of Duty and, and, and 2K and all that. Like, are you? Of course. <laughs> of course. Are you, you on know. Twitch? Like, are you streaming? Are you? Nah, I'm not, man. Okay. They be trying to they be trying to get me to do it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, 
I never did it before, so now I'm not on right. Twitch and on that live you know, stream and stuff. That's like that new wave, like how, you know, Cats is making money now. I, and, and you know what I'm saying? Like we seeing T Grizzly out here, yeah. you know, making crazy money and, and just staying out the way. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I, I respect him for that, man, because yeah. it come a time where you got to look for certain things that's going to help you do that, bro. You feel me? Like I feel like that's a part of being a man, man. Accepting the fact that you lead the streets to the youngest, the youth. Always be well respected in the streets. You don't necessarily got to be feared, you know what I'm saying? But be respected in the streets. So wherever you come from, you might not yeah. be from the streets. Right, right. Just be a, a, a good man and, and, and get to that age where you can say, you know what? I'm about to find a little different shit to do so I can stay out the way. You know what I'm saying? The 2K and the Mad and the Call of Duty, like, it's just there. Yeah. It keep you preoccupied, make you stay out the way. You feel me? I could go to two day parties in a day and probably three clubs every night. I could go to five parties a day just by off my phone being invited. Right. Hey, such and such birthday, uh, Herbo in town, man, such and such in town, such and such in town, come out. I'm talking about not even off bookings, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but a lot come with that. Always out on every scene, on every set, a lot of shit come with that. Right. So when you get in a situation where you could just chill and just play the game, I ain't on the Twitch streaming services and all that. I'm talking about just me and my homies, we online right, just right. thugging. Yeah. From 2K to Madden to, Call of Duty and and maybe Grand Theft and then rever- and keep going. And yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that game shit is cool. Right. Yeah. Nah, nah, that's what's up, man. Um, any upcoming like tours or festivals, anything you performing at? We were just having some, um, I believe the next festival we just did, uh, what the fuck we just do? Some in the water, we did South by Southwest. The next one is Brockley City Fest. You know what I'm saying? That's coming up, I believe, in July, I believe, or yeah. maybe June, I'm not sure. But I think it's July. And um we just I'm I'm working on this album, bro. I'm trying to perfect this shit, get this shit out, shooting a lot of videos, flying everywhere, shooting videos and getting different looks and shit for the for the album. So that's what I'm really focused on. But um I believe Brock the City is next, man. You okay. know what I'm saying? But shout out to everybody who brought me out on any festival, man, whatever it was, from the Meek Mill uh 10 year anniversary tour to the something in the water, South by Southwest, Brockley City, everybody who give me an opportunity or anything, everything is a blessing to me. Like, there's no more taking shit for granted, man, because I took a lot of shit for granted. Like, I'm a rapper, that's what I'm supposed to do. So, I'm, I'm here, man, whatever. Give me the mic, man. Let me know when I go on. I used to be like that, you feel me? And like, prison made me look back on my career like, nigga, you did some shit like, Millions and millions of people will never do. You gotta appreciate that. So that's what I'm on. Word. That's what's up, man. And uh, you got any uh, last words, shout outs, anything you wanna give before we get up out of here? Man, long live my brother, Booster, man. Long live Booster the Shooter. I miss you, bro. Long live Rax, man. Free all the men. Free all the men that's locked behind them walls, man. And um, I send y'all my love. I send the streets my love. You know what it is. What's yes, up? I just followed all of my ops from a fake Instagram page He about to pull up and catch him a bomb But really he thinking he getting laid I was in church